Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. For this episode, we will be looking at Flamingo Chylus arboricola or the Borneo Black. These guys have gone through quite a few name changes in a very short amount of time. As a matter of fact, for those of you that listen to my podcast, you probably heard me do an entire podcast using the wrong name. I went to correct it the next podcast and used the wrong name again because they had changed a third time. So hopefully I got it right this time. But anyway, these are really cool spiders and there's a really awesome story behind this one because it is one that was sick and I thought it was going to lose last year and it turned itself around, which has been great. I kind of just spoiled the whole thing. But anyway, hopefully you watch the video and enjoy it. Enough of me talking. Let's get into the video. All right, this has been a long time coming. We're about to rehouse my Flamingo Chylus arboricola or Borneo Black. I believe that's the current name of this name. The name of this species changed several times in a very short period, and I already did a very lengthy podcast in which I referred to it as its old name for quite the whole podcast. Tried to correct myself the next podcast, ended up using the wrong name again. So hopefully this one's right now. But anyway, picked this one up several years ago. And those of you that have listened to my podcast know the story of this one. In about August of last year, I came in and found her. She was originally in this enclosure here. And it's all dried out now because it's been sitting in the garage for months. But what I did when I came up, I found her basically sprawled out here. She was not in a death curl, but she definitely did not look good. And this is a species that will burrow and hide and does it. It's very elusive. I have like zero pictures of her. So I knew something was wrong. When I went to take her out, she was almost completely lifeless. So what I did is I put her in this enclosure here with some moist paper towels because my fear was that perhaps she was dehydrated, even though the, moist, the substrate was moist. The water dish was full. We put her in here with a little water dish, some paper towels, and what you call the tarantula ICU. Now, anybody that's followed me for a while knows that I kind of find the whole ICU thing to be silly sometimes because it helps if a tarantula is dehydrated. But if the tarantula is not dehydrated, it kind of doesn't do anything. But anyway, put her in there. She was in there for quite some time. She was quite fat when I took her out, but started losing weight. And her movements, although not like DKS, when you see the DKS movements, they look very spastic. She would reach out like with her finger, and I wish I had gotten video of this, but I honestly didn't think she'd make it. But when she was like walking, she would kind of reach out and put her foot out and kind of put it down. And then the other leg would come out almost like somebody that was just very, very weak. But it was twitchy, but not like DKS. And I started to worry that probably what happened is she got some type of bacterial infection. That's the problem with the fossorial species. One of the things I've been more cognizant of as I keep longer is that when you put them in those tubs full of dirt, just keep adding water. It's a Petri dish for bacteria if you don't change them out every once in a while. So Long story short, I put her in this enclosure. It was getting to the point where I was getting ready to euthanize her because she was not doing well. She was completely unresponsive almost. And then right around in November, she seemed to be, she was climbing up the side of the enclosure, seemed to be a little bit better. So on the off chance that she might eat, I dropped a cricket in. She immediately pounced on the cricket, devoured it. I was so excited around. I told Billy, I can't believe it. I think this thing's turning around, but she wasn't out of the woods yet. So what I did was fed her another cricket, and then I gave her a terrestrial, kind of a terrestrial setup here because I still wanted to keep track of her. I didn't want to put her back into an arboreal slash fossorial setup because I wanted to make sure I could keep an eye on her. So we put her in this setup here. I continued to feed her crickets, and then in February, miraculously, she molted and seems to be doing great. So it's time to get her into an actual appropriate enclosure. Now, a word about this species, and again, I apologize for people that are just tuning into my videos for the first time. A lot of me talking here, and I don't really have any pictures to put up over it so my apologies but we started off in a 16 ounce deli cup you know something around that size we moved her into one of these one gallon mainstays and again this species burrows they're almost more fossorial like an asian fossorial when they first start out and they will burrow she was down here i never ever ever saw her the first time i saw her in about a year and a half was when she was up here and ill so what we're going to put her in is one of these the exoterra nano talls I've got the dirt, so we've got some depth over here. We've got the cork bark with some sphagnum moss behind it, leaf litter, a plant, I believe it's a pothos, golden pothos, and this will allow her to do some burrowing. Just gotta keep those lower levels moist because this is a moisture dependent species, which was why I was worried at first that maybe she dehydrated, but now my thought is it was a bacterial infection. I think I've lost other fossorials over the years from the same thing. This one just so happened to pull through and maybe it was because I got her away from the bacteria in time and she was able to clean it out of her system. Now I'm a little worried about this one because although when I was dealing with her when she was sick, she was a sweetheart. She's not sick anymore. And notice how quiet I get because this is stressful. I'm not gonna lie. Let's see if I can get this out of here without. 
Well, hopefully, Billy can get a shot of, I'm saying her. I've had people tell me that the males would have, you'd be able to see it, but feel free to chime in. Again, I keep a lot of species for the ones I've only kept one of. I haven't had a, as much experience as people that have been keeping these guys for years that can tell you, hey, I've seen a male before. It looks like this at this age. So if you think you know what it is, feel free to chime in. She is gorgeous. Dear Lord. That is a beautiful spider. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get her into this without incident. Can you brush this to the right? Thank you. No, my right. <laughs> You're right, which is <laughs> still bright. And growth rate on this one has been rather, I mean, you see here, these guys get really large, I believe, and eight inches, nine inches, I've heard, and you can see that it took a while for her to get here. There we go. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This one just jumped up big time on one of my favorite looking spiders list. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take that, start to take that off. And what we're gonna do is get the other enclosure up in here so we can get her right in. I don't know if Billy can get any shots. We don't need this here anymore. through the top and hopefully get her to go right around the back here. So this cage here will probably unfortunately not be her final home. If it gets as big, she gets as big as I think she's going to get, this one will last her a few molts and we'll probably get her into something around 12 by 12 by 18. We'll see how it goes. But let's see if we can't get her up. And she's probably about, she's not spread out right now, maybe four and a half, five inches, what do you think? Around there? Hmm. Now what we want her to do is come out here and go around the corner. I like when it, they actually do what I say I think they're going to do because it just makes it look like I know what I'm talking about. So there we go. Now what she will most likely do, a lot of people pick up the Flamingo Kyla species, Lampropelma, Omothymus, is that it, the other one? And they immediately expect arboreal behavior. You're not going to get arboreal behavior. I tell most people give them like an arboreal setup combined with a fossorial setup. That's the best way I can explain it. You give them room just in case they want to go up and out, but more often than not, what you're going to see is they are going to burrow quite a bit. And usually what they get, if you look over here with this species, I don't know if you, we kind of ripped it up, they kind of make these dirt socks. So when you go to rehouse one, there's a video where we rehouse, I think it was my ovulosopes that we did and we dragged her out and she was like in a total sock like we had to break open the sock to get the spider out that protects them obviously if the ground floods the webbing, webbing is waterproof it protects them but just know that sometimes if you have to dig them out you see right there that sock can be kind of a pain in the butt and it's kind of tough to get the spider out of it now again growth rate for these guys have been medium pace or so she hasn't really blown it up as far as you know quick growth but and then, of course, she had the hiccup there. Is she, can you see her? Oh, good. She had the hiccup there when she was ill. Hopefully, what will happen here is she will dig up in here, dig underneath there a little bit, pull some of this dirt up. What I would expect to happen is a little, like, web sock that will come up. The opening will probably be either, well, there's not enough room up here, probably over here, so she can hunt. But so glad that she's healthy now. This was one that really 
one of the few times I think that I've had a situation like that where the spider's gotten ill and I've seen it before. I had it happen with, I believe, a Harpacterra pulcherpes years ago. And I believe what happens is when you keep them in the enclosures, especially the fossorial species, they get, you know, little traces of biological matter down there when they're eating. As much as they try to be clean, some of that stuff gets down there. You, it creates a little, you know, some bacteria. And I think what ends up happening is you get a bacteria infection. And usually what you see as far as signs of it is you'll find the fossorial species suddenly are above ground, they're hanging out above ground, they're hovering around water dishes. I Usually that's a sign that something's up, that they're sick, and I do think it has something to do with bacteria, but unfortunately until we do a lot more studying about these guys, we'll never know. But there we go. Looking great from Mingachylus arboricola. Awesome spider, Borneo black. And I will obviously do updates on this because I've had people from the podcast asking for quite some time how she's doing and I've been planning this video and I just wanted to make sure she was in really good shape before we ended up rehousing her. Now again, I want to make it very clear with this one, I am guessing there was a bacterial infection. If somebody comes on and goes, how do you know? I don't, but I've heard a lot of discussion lately, I think, by keepers who have brought up the idea that in many instances, these guys are in situations where bacteria, harmful bacteria can breed in their dens, and that some of the behaviors we've been seeing are animals that have been stricken by some type of bacterial infection. Unfortunately, if you bring it to the vet, they're probably not going to be able to do anything for you, but any vets out there that have been kind of dabbling in arachnid medicine, please chime in if I'm wrong. What I found most of the times when I've seen something like this happen, the spider goes, uh, comes outside, it hovers around the water dish, it's dead in a few days. I was shocked but incredibly delighted when this one turned it around. She's eaten several times since we rehoused her in this video, and it looks like she's completely on the mend, which is great. So I will keep people updated, obviously, and hopefully we'll get some images of this one out and about, but do know this is a very shy species. You don't see them very often if they're kept correctly. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you'd like to subscribe, very much appreciate it. Click the little circle up there. If you want to check some videos out in the meantime, see what I'm all about, you can find them over there. If you leave a comment, no, I will answer the comment. It just may take me a few days because I've been tend tending to get quite a few of them, even on older videos, and it takes me a while to get through them. But if you take the time to comment, I'll take the time to respond. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you guys next time.